a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, it's right that we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows uh, after the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, right? And we celebrate that yesterday. And there are um, any number of uh, beautiful and uh, worthy of meditation uh, devotions uh, that are um, know, assigned or attributed to this feast. One of them is the seven dollars of, uh, of Mary. Um, this, the seven swords that pierced Mary's heart, uh, and uh, we got, I, won't, I won't spell them out because um, I'm too lazy this morning, but uh, <laughs> I'm tired. No, uh, I, w I won't spell them out because you, know, if, because you can look them up. They're quite easy to look up. Uh, the seven sorrows of Mary and um, the Stabat Mater also is a very rich prayer. Uh, that, again, we could have read as a, as a sequence this morning, but um, preferred not to. But it's uh, but it's worth it's worthy of your of your time, your attention, uh, if if you uh, want to make the room today. If you want to love Jesus today, then you will not just you, <laughs> you will look those up and uh, no. Okay, so um, no more homework. Uh, but good. We this the feast I think uh, puts us in, in exactly the right place. The gospel today that we use to celebrate the feast puts us in exactly the right place, puts us at the foot of the cross. And, um, you know, just as, just as we were reflecting on yesterday, the fact that uh, the, uh, the cross is both, a ref it's, it both reveals the, um, the plight in which we're stuck, right? It, it reveals the, uh, the ugliness and brutality, the disfiguring nature of sin. We see that sin taking it, right, the, the, the power, the corruptive force of, of sin and death, we see it. And then we see what God has done about it. Here, likewise, we see that just as Jesus goes to uh, the, the low point or the low, the low places in the world in order to raise them up, Mary is, Mary is unflinching in her, in her dedication to him there. And it, th this is really the question for us too then, right? Will, will we, with our yes to God, follow, follow Mary to the foot of the cross? I mean, we'll, if we want to be, part, and, I, and I know that we have any number of Sumerian titles, um, be, uh, they're not floating around. There are some of them ascribed to her, some of them ascribed to her by theologians only, some of them ascribed to her by the universal church and declared so on and so forth. I mean, mediatrix, right, co-redemptrix. I mean, some of, the, and some of these are contested, some of them are not. And for all the people who get into those discussions about which titles should and shouldn't be attributed to Mary, give it a break. Give it a break. Do what she does. Just do what she does. You know what? What, what merit is it? What it, merit is it for us to get Mary's titles right? We want to be Mary's son. We want to be Mary's daughter, right? We want to be? We want to be with Mary at the foot of the cross. Does it really matter if we get her titles right? Someone will tell me after. Yeah, it will. And, you know, it's like okay. Well, yeah, you know, if you can bring it to me and like not be angry in the rest of the week, we can have that discussion. That's fine, but. The point is to be with Jesus. Because any of those titles that are attributed to her are hers by virtue of her yes, her yes to God and her being with Jesus at, in that place, at the foot of the cross. If you're not going to be at the foot of the cross, right, what's the point of even joining that discussion? It's fruitless. The fruit is to be found at the foot of the cross. Which means that we, 
we have to follow Jesus where he goes. Do you think Mary, his mother, wanted to follow Jesus where he went? To the cross? Right? Not of her own accord, except by trusting him and following him. I mean, the, the, the dedication, the devotion that Mary had to Jesus is on full display here. Because, again, she's at the foot of the cross. She's where no mother would want to be. But she is, again, eagerly and unflinchingly and without reservation and hesitation, she's there. She's there. So this, is, this has to be for us as well. Where is our Lord leading where we don't want to be? Where, I should say, it's not because it's not quite like that. Where is our Lord leading that we, of our own desire, our own, our own will, our own plans and dreams and the rest, we would not choose to be, except that Jesus is there and we want to be with him. If it means sharing in his sufferings, great, because in fact, right, the cross is the place of glory. So Mary sharing in Jesus' sufferings is also, at the, at the same time, sharing in the glory of God. So where is, Jesus go, where is Jesus going? Where is Jesus going in us? Right, because his, again, his, his own life of love, the Holy Spirit is at work in us and working through us. The Holy Spirit is leading us, guiding us, sustaining us, strengthening us. The Holy Spirit is prompting us and so on and so forth. Where are we going or not? Are we going or not? And you know, this is, I didn't share this the other day, it's a good one. You have to trust me, this is a good one. <laughs> At least for a minute until I prove that it's a good one. This is a good one. One of, one of the ways, this is not, it's not exactly foolproof, okay, so there's some guardrails have to put around it, but you know, so we get these promptings. How do we know, how do we know they're from the Holy Spirit? I didn't get that question. I should have, I should have gotten that question, but I, it's a good question. What, how, do we, how, can we, how do we know they're from the Holy Spirit? Now, this is one way that puts us into like a 90% category. 90% this is from the Holy Spirit, right? We're 90% sure it's from the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit prompts you to do something you do not want to do. Yes, yes. When, when, you're, when you feel compelled, like when, again, we're close to God, right? We're, when, when, we're, when our life of prayer is good, I mean, good, like we're in relationship with God, we recognize it. When we're prompted to do something we would not choose to do. And, in, and, and even stronger, we would prefer to not do, we would be really embarrassed if we were to have, you know, all the rest, right? This is the work of the Spirit. And I would say, and I would say, in reflection on the cross, where we're prompted to go to the low places, where, where, in the sight of the world, there is nothing. There is nothing to be gained by our going there. Perfect for us. That's perfect for us. Because what? We're givers. Right? We're not in the, we're not in the world to take. We have everything we need in Christ Jesus. We're there to give. And we're there to give Jesus. Mainly. Right? We're there to give Jesus. So, again, promptings of the Spirit. Jesus is leading. Where is he leading? He might be leading against our will. But we want to give our yes to him, and that's a great opportunity to do so. So our Lord is leading. He's leading to the low place, and it's ours simply to trust and follow him, just as Mary did. Just as Mary trusted and followed him to the place where no way she would want, she would want to go, except that Jesus was there. So, so to us, we are just Jesus people, just Jesus people, where there's nothing there for us, the low places, the rest, Jesus is there, we will go. That's our yes, and we can grow into that today.